wanted to say hi. We're obviously here at the TCOID studio in um, lovely San Diego. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Steve Edelman. <laughs> now, I'm excited about today's TCOID Live. Mm -hmm. But first, we're going to tell you about one. Yeah, so um, one is a conference that we've been doing for a while. It's dedicated for just people with type 1 diabetes. Pre-COVID, you know, we did it in person, obviously. It was a whole weekend retreat in San Diego. We're going to bring that back in 2023. But this year, on September 10th, which is actually just a couple weeks away now, it's a you know, completely free online virtual conference. Um, if you have type 1 diabetes or care about somebody that has type 1, sign up. It's completely free. And it, even if you can't be there that day, definitely sign up because everything is available for... How long are we keeping it up there for now? Well, it, it stays up for two weeks and then it goes to, right to our website. Yeah. But let me just say something else, Jeremy. Um, you said just for type 1s. And I, loved ones. Well, okay, that's not the whole list. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like the fact that we are elite type 1s, but um, there's a lot of type 2s that are going to be on the live today because now we're sharing the technology. A lot of type 2s, you know, when they their pancreas doesn't secrete any insulin at all, they're on MDI, they're on pumps, they're on CGMs, and even when we did the live, there were a lot of folks with type 2, even healthcare professionals interested in type 1. So it's, you know, I know what you meant. It's mainly going to be covering topics for type 1. Our entire faculty all have type 1 mm -hmm. diabetes. Now that's impressive. So if you have type 2, we won't kick you out. Right, you're right. Everybody is welcome um, to 1. Type 1 wannabes are welcome <laughs> too. Um, so and I think that is a good segue to talk about what we're talking about today, which is diabetes technology. And Steve makes a really good point that this used to be, we just thought about it exclusively for type ones. You know, they're the ones that are using this technology and, and type twos aren't, they don't care. That has completely blown up where everybody is using this technology now, especially continuous glucose monitors, um, which are really becoming the standard of care for everybody with diabetes. I mean, certainly for type ones now, and for type twos on insulin, uh, CGM is being covered, it's being more readily available, et cetera. Yeah, when CGMs first came out, We'll probably talk more about this kind of stuff on our podcast, but you know it was only proof for type ones that had hypoglycemia unawareness. Type twos, forget about it. Mm -hmm. And now um, insurance companies are getting smart. Even Medicare, they realize how important it is. So if you're on insulin as a type two, uh, at least three shots a day, you will be eligible 100%. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's it's the time is coming, Jeremy. You're right that when people realize how these uh, continuous glucose monitors can really improve the way you take care of yourself, the way you eat, the way you exercise, how adherent you are with certain medications, um, then I think they're going to prove it for everybody. Yeah. So today we're really going to go through what's available because, you know, the good news is that this is changing so quickly, like the different systems that are available, the different pumps, et cetera. But the bad news is it's changing so quickly, so it's a little hard to keep up with. So you really have to educate yourself because, you know, even the, the best well-intentioned doctors, providers, whatever, might not know about the latest and greatest because it's literally every month it seems like there's some update. I'll bet you your caregiver doesn't know, Eric, bleep this out, shit, about this kind of new stuff. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> Wait, he's supposed to bleep it out. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, so let's pull up the slides and, and get into it. So here's um, my fancy background that I, that I made. Yeah. Um, you, do you like that? Look at all the technology. It's ones and zeros, like very like matrixy. I love it. So um, <laughs> I'm Jeremy Pettis, Steve Edelman. We're both physicians. I, we should have mentioned at the top. We're both endocrinologists. Work at uh, UCSD and the VA Medical Center here in San Diego. Both have type one diabetes since we're 15. Um, and uh, so let's get into it. Let's see if I can go to the next slide here. Go to the next slide. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to start with continuous glucose monitoring. We're going to do kind of three sections. So we're going to start with CGM, then we're going to do some of the hybrid closed loop pumps. We'll talk about what that means. And then we're actually going to talk a little bit about some blood sugar meters um, because, then, you know, a lot of people are obviously still using these and it's important to talk about. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to leave that part out. Um, so, yeah, we got the, we only have a handful of slides, but they're important slides. Yeah. And we're, we'll, we're going to start off and we'll go back and forth. Mm-hmm. So, Steve, since you were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, what do you think has been the biggest advance that's happened in your type 1 career? Uh, well, CGM, CGM, CGM. Mm -hmm. Now, a close follow-up, um, you know, is these hybrid closed-loop systems. Mm -hmm. But I think the CGM that affects 
that could affect the masses of people, type 1, type 2 living with diabetes. And I, I always say, you've heard me say this, it's the single greatest advance since the discovery of insulin. Yeah, that was a softball, because I've heard you say that about <laughs> you know, 300 times. Um, and it's true, Well, you said it too. Yeah, because you said it so much, and I just can't get it out of my head now. But um, <laughs> it's definitely true. So we're going to go through the different systems available. This is the Eversense. Um, it's an implantable continuous glucose monitor. Steve, you know a lot about this. Do you yeah, want to tell yeah, everybody? Yeah, let me, let me tell you briefly. Um, so uh, Eversense uh, has been around for many years, in, and... In the United States, um, it's a 90-day sensor. In Europe, it was 180, and now in the United States, the Eversense E3 was approved for 180 days. So it's a small little tiny sensor. You can see it on the screen there. It goes under the skin in a 15-minute office procedure. You end up leaving with kind of a, a steri strip, which keeps it together, no stitches. And after it's healed uh, and, and calibrated 24 hours, then it's good for 180 days. Now you wear this very light transmitter that gets right over it, that negates the need to implant a big old con continuous glucose monitor under your skin. And you can take that off and on anytime you want. It's not even, I wouldn't even call it tape, it's more like a kind of a skin adhesive, double-sided. That's, and, yeah. And it's, it's very light. Well, I was gonna say about the adhesive. Yeah, please. So that is actually a really nice feature that because you can put on a new adhesive every day. Um, the adhesive is very mild. Um, so I haven't heard about anybody that's had like yeah. a skin reaction to this adhesive. It's very different than the other continuous glucose monitors which have to get more and more kind of strong adhesive because they need to last 10, 14 days, whatever. Um, so um, if people do have it, you know, his adhesive issues with other devices, this is something that you know, is really helpful. Yeah, you know, th this thing has a little micro USB. You charge it every day or every other day um, the, the E3 itself requires one calibration a day. The older version had two. And what I like about uh, this transmitter that if your phone, if you're not near your phone and your blood sugar gets low or high, it'll have an on-body alert. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes, you know, you just may not want to wear it. Yeah. And if you're, if, you know, if you're anybody that wants to wear, let's say a sleeveless shirt or a sleeveless dress, um, you know, that helps in that matter. And I should, you know, tell you about some of the future R&D briefly that, um, that they're working on the 365. 365 days, a year's worth of use. Yes, yeah. yep. And also in the future, there's going to be a hybrid model where you can actually take your phone and swipe over the, where the sensor is. No, no transmitter. Yeah. So if you want to take it off but still get numbers, you could do that. And yep. then you can put the transmitter on anytime you want. And you know, it's a, it's a different form factor. And I think one thing that I wanted to say about today's show and all of the presentations on this topic is one size doesn't fit all. Mm -hmm. You need to pick the system that works best for you. And yeah. the good news is we got choices. You know, I'll say that, you know, when you tell people there's an implantable CGM, they get excited, you know, thinking there's not gonna be anything on their body. And then they get a little bummed to learn that you have to have this transmitter on. Um, which I understand, but the good news is, as you said, that you can take it off whenever you want. Like maybe you're going out for the night, maybe you're going to the beach, whatever. And as soon as you put it back on, you get readings again. It's very different than, you know, say Dexcom or Libre. If you take that sensor off, it's done. You know, you can't put it back on. And it goes to the different type of smartphones and also the smart watches mm -hmm. as well. And it has all the downloading software that you typically get with the other CGM. Yeah. So it's, um, I think for, for the Eversense folks, it's marketed by Asensia, the makers of a blood glucose monitor will show at the very end. Um, and like, once again, it's a different form factor. You gotta figure out what's good in your lifestyle. Yeah. Last thing about it, you know, it currently doesn't work with any pumps. Um, so that is a, you know, a limitation right now. Um, but it's an option and a lot of people don't know about it. So if this is interesting to you, ask your provider and they, they probably would have to refer you to kind of like a specialty clinic that does these. Yeah. That's not every single place that just will implant these. By the way, Steve and I have both had these implanted, put in and taken out and you know, I'm speaking from my own experience, it just wasn't that big of a deal. He was there at Watch Me and, and um, <laughs> yeah, he went first and then he left immediately and didn't watch me. That's not so true. That's absolutely true. My, believe it or not, mine's still in. It's expired. <laughs> uh, however, I'm waiting to get a new one. Okay. Um, and, uh, this arm? Yeah. Okay. This arm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we actually feel it <laughs> right through the skin? But uh, the other thing I was going to say is, um, you threw me off with that comment. Yeah, I'm sorry. You just left me. So yeah, <laughs> I left you speechless. Um, all right. Well, we're moving on. Um, 
So we're going to talk about Dexcom. So everybody kind of knows Dexcom because they've been a long time you know, around, and this is what they do, continuous glucose monitors. Um, uh, both of us right now are wearing the, the G6, you know, um, which is a fantastic system. It's been around since, I think, 2018 now. And so we, we both have hybrid closed loops, and there's all the hybrid closed loops other than the Medtronic one works with the Dexcom. Mm -hmm. And that hopefully will change in the future. Yeah, being able to interchange devices, gosh, that would be nice if you, you know, weren't locked into this and that. Um, but the G7, you know, so we're getting the next iteration, and this is kind of like iPhones, you know, it's like every year or so there's the next one, and it's, it's getting updated, and they get a little bit smaller and faster, et cetera. And here's some of the, the highlights. So it's 60% smaller. Um, you know, first of all, I got to say, I don't really have a problem with the G6. But we're guys. Yeah. I never had a problem with the size. No, I know. <laughs> is that some kind of joke? No. no. Okay, good. But you, it tells you know, where your mind is at. opportunity for you that you usually <laughs> run with that No, kind of size, <laughs> size doesn't matter sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, but I meant in the sense that, like, you know, it's, it's great that these things keep updating, but I, I feel like we're at a place with CGM that they, they function really well. And now it's just kind of icing on the cake, is my opinion. Um, so it's smaller, and that does matter. It's certainly, you know, like a lot of people have issues with the form factor and being able to hide it. I, I totally get that. It's more accurate, which is great. It has this 30-minute warm-up, um, which is different than the two hours currently with the G6. And I got to tell you, you know, we've been spoiled because that two hours is like you just feel like you're in my, my control goes to shit two <laughs> hours i'm like flat bleep, bleep all that day long. go back in time and believe that <laughs> <laughs> um so the 30 minutes is nice and then i'm gonna skip to this other one where it says the 12 hour grace period to replace finished sensors for a more seamless transition so apparently while your current sensor is ending you can put on the new one to have it you know warm up so as soon as you finish the old one the new one is just ready to go so there's literally yeah. no gap yeah that well 30 minutes is amazing, and that extra 12 hours, to me, it's just going to be a 10 and a half day sensor. Yeah, I mean, like, extra 12 <laughs> is just a little longer, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, and I, I would say this, the, the other feature you're going to talk about, which is the sensor is built in uh, with the transmitter. Mm -hmm. And that is nice. You don't have to worry about that transmitter expiring every yeah. three months at a time when, you know, you're in Siberia on a, on a you know, a cruise. Yeah, that happens a lot. I'm on Siberia on a cruise, and I'm just like, man. Is there water there? <laughs> I don't know. It sounded good. It sounded but, um, good. You know, like, yeah, that's definitely happened where you put on a new sensor, and then you put on the transmitter, and it says, like, oh, your transmitter's dead. And, well, you just wasted a sensor. You got to go find, like, a new transmitter. It gives you a warning. Well, yeah, but I guess I don't pay attention to them. And so it's, and it's like another prescription and everything to have that's the, the thing. different things. It's so another prescription. This is one thing all together that makes a big deal. Um, and some approved customizable alert settings, it says. So um, this has been approved in Europe. And it's kind of, you know, been in this like any day now situation in the U.S. I don't know, do you have any more accurate time frame than I do about when this might come? I'm not sure it's approved in Europe. I thought I got it. That's the Libre 3, I think. No. I think it's Dexcom. It's absolutely Dexcom. Well, it, Dexcom. Might be, it might be approved. It's not. I just Libre don't 3 is approved here. This is approved in Europe. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to Europe tomorrow. Okay. Um, well, I, I would just say this, that... Um, I think a big deal is the fact that, you know, we, we all like, you know, smaller things on our body. I'd say, and, and this sounds like a sexist comment, but especially women, um, you know, just different situation. And I do think that having that 12 hour grace period is awesome. And I think it's important to say that for all of you folks on hybrid closed loop systems, Omnipod, the fo five, the tandem control IQ looping, it's going to be a little bit of time until the software people uh, work out the connectivity. Mm -hmm. So don't, I think you made that point the other day, or no, in the lecture that you gave, don't, don't go get rid of all your sensors oh, right. the day it comes out, because you know, it's gonna be a little while. Right, and I've asked that, you know, how long is it gonna take to update with the, you know, the pumps, and they say like, well, it should be pretty quick, but we'll see. Um, all right, so by the way, this has a reading of 6.1, which is a scale that the Europeans use where it's approved. Um, millimolar <laughs> multiplied times 18. Oh, pop quiz. Well, look at this. We got a pop quiz. Who so, put that in there? I don't know. So <laughs> when talking about uh, Dexcom, when was Dexcom's first CGM released? Okay. So we got 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009. I mean, the option should have been more varied, to be honest. Yeah, it should have been like 83. Like 1999 yeah. or 2015. But obviously, but this also makes it tougher. Well, I can tell everyone that... Um, I, Dexcom being in San Diego, 
um, you know, I work with them on development, mm -hmm. software, certain things, like a lot of endos in town. And 2006, I got my first short-term sensor last three days. It was not waterproof, and I still remember this. I took it to Hawaii on vacation. I never read the instructions, kind of like you. <laughs> and I went into the jacuzzi in the water, and for some reason, it didn't mess it up. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a, it was a real, you know, a game changer when it comes to people living with yeah. mostly type one at that time. So 2006, a lot has changed since then. I honestly don't know what, how we did it before then. And we are going to do a podcast after this recording. We're going to talk a little bit more about the history and evolution of these devices. And I want to hear more about your story of what it was like, you know, actually wearing this thing and, and how accurate it was, et cetera, or not. Well, I want to tell you about urine testing. That's what I want to tell you. So the answer is 2006. Good job. And bamboo needles. Okay, <laughs> cool. All right, the Libre 3. So this is approved now in the U.S. So, um, you know, we've done this, like, a version of this talk not that long ago. We had to talk about, like, it's coming. And this has just been approved in the last, I don't know, month or two. Yeah. Actually, yeah, back in yeah. June, I think. And it's on the shelves now. Yeah. So, you want to tell us about it? Well, I think it's a jump up from the prior Libre, uh, Libres because, first and foremost, it's not a intermittently scanned device anymore. It gives you a blood sugar every minute. Uh, you know, the form factor is nicer. Uh -huh. You can see it's 70% smaller, and that's nice. The transmitter is built into the sensor as it has been. It's got, you know, uh, it has, uh, it's more accurate. Uh -huh. Now, it still is waiting for approval from the FDA to be hooked up with pumps for hybrid closed loop. They had an issue with reading uh, it, uh, artificially high if you take vi a lot of vitamin C. So we'll see, they're still working that out. So that's, that's coming. And I think the other thing that's nice is if you've ever used a, a Libre or taught someone how to do it, uh, when you take the sensor out of the package, it comes in two parts. You gotta screw it in, snap it down, and then do it, put it on. It's still pretty darn easy. Mm -hmm. But now it comes as one unit. Yeah. And you know what? Anything to make life easier is important. And then just to highlight, you know, you said it's not an intermittently scanned device. So the, the prior Libres, you know, to get your blood sugar, you had to have a reader and, and swipe it. Yeah. And then it would tell you then what your blood sugars were, but it wasn't kind of constantly pushing the information to your phone. This is now a continuous glucose monitor where you're going to have the information always on your phone. So it's another, you know, great option. Yeah. And, uh, there, and like you said, did you say there was no reader? There's no reader now. With There's the no reader, reader now. now. Yeah. yeah. It's going to go to your and, phone. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, the representative was just showing me that it, it's on most smartphones, but you have to really check if yours is compatible. There's lots of ways to check, and what he told me was you just go to the app store on your phone, and if your phone is not compatible, you won't be able to download the uh, Abbott Libre 3. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no, you know, finger sticks. I'm just sitting, I'm thinking here while we're Not one here. finger stick. <laughs> you know what, Jeremy, in the old days, and you were there too, there were so many little... Little in, black holes on my black, fingers. Yeah, why were they time? black? Like, I don't we're, know. we're not car mechanics, for God's sake. <laughs> and, but sometimes you would just squeeze a finger. You hadn't pricked it. In, yeah, and in, you could react. It would usually then, squirt yeah. pretty far. In and I've, I, I've had some serious squirters. You've seen that. They just go all <laughs> over the place. And you never can predict when they're going to squirt everywhere. So it's nice not to do that. And, you know, we, I think we, we needed to kind of back up a little bit and just remind everybody that if you have type 1 diabetes, you have to be on a continuous glucose monitor. I mean, like, there's just no way to control your blood sugars without it. And then, for again, for you type 2s, these are approved now. If you take mealtime insulin, you absolutely should look into getting on one of these, not having to prick your finger, seeing the information all the time. It really is a game changer to make your life better um, you know, not worried so much about your blood or your, your control, knowing what it is, uh, getting your control better. It's just, these are great. Yeah, you know, and I, I do have uh, patients and individuals I know, and they're pretty stubborn. They just don't want to try the new technology. And I can tell you, it's the rare person with type 1 that would not benefit greatly from a CGM. Yeah. And a lot of you folks with type 2. But also, who likes to prick your gosh darn <laughs> finger? Oh, now you're just saying gosh? Yeah. You're not asking Eric to well, there are religious. Out. All right, so now we're moving on to hybrid closed loop pumps. And you can see my, my technology here with the ones and zeros continues on. So <laughs> a little bit about what a hybrid closed loop pump is really quick. Yeah. So, you know, 
in the not so distant past, a couple years ago, we had continuous glucose monitors that would tell us what our blood sugars were, and we had insulin pumps that would deliver insulin, but they didn't talk to each other. So in the last handful of years now, we have systems or pumps that will start modifying how much insulin they give you based on the continuous glucose monitor, um, and some of that you don't have to do anything yourself at all. So specifically, where we're at with these devices right now, why we call them a hybrid closed loop, well first of all, a fully closed loop would mean that we wouldn't have to do anything. You put these devices on and you could set it and forget it and it would just take care of all your insulin. And your we're going to talk about that yeah. at the very end. So this is called hybrid because it'll, it'll modify essentially your, your basal amount of insulin. So if your blood sugars start drifting up, it can give you more insulin to kind of bring you back down into range. If it starts drifting down, it can give you less to bring you back down into range. So they do really well with these kind of slow drifts. But they're not aggressive enough, if you will, to handle meals. You know, if you sat down and just ate 100 grams of carbs and, and didn't tell it anything, there's just no way it could catch up. So it's a hybrid closed loop because it does some things. But then, of course, we still have to do a lot of our normal diabetes tasks, especially bolusing for meals, counting carbs, those things. They're pretty impressive systems because it's all based on your predicted blood sugar. And it modulates your basal rate, as you said. Some of these units give you micro boluses, but it's, it's just basically increasing your basal rate. The, it works on not just your predicted glucose, but also how much insulin on board and the carbohydrate input. There's exercise settings, there's sleep settings. So they're getting pretty sophisticated. And um, I texted Jeremy my 90 day clarity report. And finally, I've been working on this, that my 90 day average and I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but because I've never been at this level, was 90% time and range. It's pretty awesome. I've been trying to do this for a long time. And below, below, uh, below range, less than 1%. And you, you, know, you were telling me, too, that like, you didn't feel like you sacrificed that much. It's I not like you were eating grass all day long. No, but... Yeah. <laughs> you were smoking I didn't it. go to the dispensary, <laughs> right? But, um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it, no, I didn't. I don't feel deprived, and I, I did pay attention to it, and I did do some special tricks tips and tricks with my alert settings, but we're gonna talk about that at one. Got it. So, you know, and the point there is that these, these systems have helped enable you to do that. You know, we just couldn't do that a couple years ago, really. So, so we're gonna talk about the different systems. Um, this is actually the new kit on the block, so Omnipod 5. So Omnipod has been around for a zillion years. Steve's been using it for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Um, and it's just recently that they have their, known, their own commercially available hybrid closed loop pump. And so, real quick, the Omnipod is this little pod down here in the corner, and it's unique um, that it is the only tubeless pump, meaning that all the insulin is actually in the pod, and you control it remotely with a controller or your phone, um, and so there's no tubing. And that's always been a great feature of, of this, this system. So now it's integrated with the Dexcom um, G6 currently to do exactly what I said. It starts, it modulates essentially the basal rate. They call it little microboluses, but it's just a different way of saying kind of the same thing to me. So if your blood sugars start going up and give you more, et cetera. So this has been studied in clinical trials, and just to highlight a couple things here, in, in, in adolescents and adults on the left, and then children on the right, that if you look at the, let's say the adults, they started with 65% time and range, and after going on the, the system, they went up to 74%, about a 10% uh, increase in time and range. And that's around what you tend to see in these, these clinical trials. That was same with, uh, about the same with the, the tandem control IQ, which is great, especially when you keep in mind that you're not really doing anything different. Yep. You know, you're yep. on a pump already, and this is just activating the system. Again, the majority of the benefit in time and range comes overnight because that's where the systems can really shine. Uh, you're not eating, you're just laying there. When us users don't mess up yeah, when with we, the yeah. system. And then you wake up and everything goes to... And, yeah, let me just say though that with all these hybrid closed loop systems, the one we're gonna briefly go over, the settings are extremely important. And I'd say that, would you agree with this? One of the most important settings is the uh, insulin sensitivity factor. It tells the algorithm how much your blood sugar will drop with one unit of insulin. So based on your predicted glucose, it'll give you more or less mm -hmm. insulin. And then you have your insulin to carb, you have your basal rate settings, but all of them have important settings and we're gonna talk about that at the one conference yeah. as well. That is important because a lot of times people say, well, if it's always modifying my basal, why do I even have a basal rate in my pump? And it actually is important to still have your basal rate set at a, at a 
level that's in the right ballpark. In the ballpark, yep. Because typically when your blood sugar is in a good range, let's say 120 or so, the pump will default to whatever that setting is. And then it only gives you more or less when you're going kind of high or low. So if your basal rate is way off the charts, either too low or too high, that can still mess you up. Yeah. So Got to get it in the right range. They're not foolproof. So yeah. they need, you need endocrinologists like us mm -hmm. to help you out. Yeah, so we still need jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so timing range improved. The A1C improved a little bit by about 0.4%. It's not too shabby, especially when these people started at 7.2. They were already doing yeah, pretty darn good. Yeah, you can't really expect a huge drop when you start that way. Yeah. And then importantly, there was also, you know, a reduction in hypoglycemia or at least no increase in lows. Usually when we see people's, you know, time and range or their A1C improve, uh, we get worried, well, are they having more lows? With these systems, there's at least no increase in hypoglycemia and typically a slight reduction. Yeah, and that's, that's unheard of. Yeah. So it's a good option. This is available now. So you can go and talk to your provider if this is something that's interest interesting to you. Um, we should mention that um, it still has this, like, other device that you got to use. Um, and it doesn't work with the iPhone, so you would have to carry around another thing. Well, it's an Android, it's a yeah. Android phone that's not a phone. But if you have an Android phone, you could have your software on that. Mm -hmm. If you're an iPhone user, you carry around the Android. Now, I, I've seen it, um, you know, it's, it's a relatively small one. It's light, but, and I do, I do believe that the folks at Insulet are working feverishly, mm -hmm. feverishly. to get it so it could work on uh, any type of smartphone. Got it. So looping, quick backstory on this. Looping has been around for a long time. I mentioned the Omni 5, Omnipod 5 just came out, um, but the technology to do these you know, algorithms has been around for a long time. So some smart people a number of years ago found out a way to essentially hack the Omnipod um, so that you could have these algorithms on your phone prior to it being FDA approved. You want to say anything about it? Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's also an open source system. The people at Night Scout, um, their, their motto is we won't wait. and to be quite frank, they got tired of waiting for the FDA, which is geared up to protect the public, so they're slower. Um, and the algorithm gets updated quite a bit, and what you can see on this screen is just what the iPhone looks like. It shows you your current blood sugar that's in bold, and then lighter dots is your predicted blood sugar, and that's not always 100% correct. It has the insulin on board, and then you can see the third arrow down is what Jeremy was talking about, the modulating basal rate, up and down, all based on the blood sugar that you can see on the first arrow, and the little upside down triangles, I call it. Someone said to me, why, why is it upside down? I don't know, the triangles. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's triangles. Because it looks like they're upside down. But, yeah, it um, these are when that um, I gave a bolus. Um, I'm not even sure if that's me, but that's when someone gave a bolus. And then down below is the active carbs, and it has lots of settings exercise settings you can set your your goal range anywhere you want it mm -hmm. so it, it, it i'd say it has a little more flexibility but it's not fda approved um, and i would say these other hybrid loop systems that are approved uh, being approved means our insurance company will pay for it um, and it's just another option and it's been there uh, and people were waiting for the omnipod 5 so now folks are migrating over mm -hmm. so i don't think i have a slide specifically on tandem control iq uh, because it's been around for a while now, um, does all, has all the features that we talked about, um, a fantastic pump, it has, you know, tubing, um, but improves time and range, reduces, you know, hypoglycemia, uh, fantastic pump. The update here is that up until very recently, you would have to actually manually take the pump off your belt or wherever you have it to do a bolus. And now you can actually um, download this software to, to be able to do a, a remote bolus from your phone. Um, so again, a big deal, especially, you know, if you're wearing a dress or whatever, you can't get to your, yeah. your, your pump. I mean, it's huge to be able to just take out your phone and be able to bolus. And you also have that uh, quick bolus feature too. Yeah, you, you can. Mentioned. Actually, people never like know about that, but the, the, the top silver button on the pump can be set up so you can just push it to give yourself like a, a bolus. Um, it's called a, the quick bolus feature, so you can just Google that to look how to set that up. Um, I was very, very recently on the Tandem until I'm trying the Omnipod now. Um, and I use that, that quick bolus all the time because you didn't have to take it out. You know, I'm thinking about um, parents of kids in school that wear the tandem control IQ. You know, if, if, you know, if they have a hard time getting their insulin on time when they're about to eat, they can give their kid a bolus from anywhere. Is it from anywhere? I think you got to be like close to it. We'll get back to you on that. I don't think you can like bolus somebody if they're in Japan. I didn't tell you they weren't volunteering at school that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's, and you that's might be right. Feature. Well, um, you, you, yeah. All right. So 
If you want to um, figure out how to do this, just Google Tandem Remote Bolus. I, I drew this pretty little circle around it, what I searched for. And this, this second thing comes up, how to update you know, to mobile bolus. Um, it's available now. It's available now. Uh, and then this is exactly what comes up, what you need to know to start. Um, so apparently it's available for iPhone and Android. It says the process takes like 45 minutes, but you don't need a prescription for this. So you can just kind of go and start doing this yourself and you can actually get it. I, I, I saw your slides. I said, wow. That yeah, I taught you something. Cool. And then, you know, what's coming next for Tandem? Um, they've been working on this kind of tubeless option uh, for quite a while. So I don't have an anticipated date of when this might come out. But gosh, it'd be nice to have another tubeless option, some innovation in kind of the pump space. Um, so, a, you know, much smaller pump. You can see the, the relative form factor operated by a smartphone, waterproof. Um, and so I don't know much about this because it's not really that much in the public domain. Yeah, and but you don't have to stick it on your arm like in the picture, you but can you can wear, if you yeah. want to. So yeah, we, you know, size matters. <laughs> so now it matters? You said sometimes it doesn't. It's really confusing. So you want to talk about Medtronic? Uh, no, I want you to talk about <laughs> Okay. I'm not that familiar with it, but yeah. um, I, I just, the 780G is coming out. Yeah. It's got lots of features. Why don't you go through them? Yeah, so Medtronic obviously has been in the space forever. They had the 670G, which was technically the first hybrid closed loop system. They're updating now to the 780G. Um, you know, the sensor has a seven day sensor wear, but it still requires a calibration a day. Historically, we haven't prescribed this very much because the sensor hasn't been as accurate. It's improving, but the, you know, still having to calibrate it once a day um, is still a limitation. So once a day or once a week? Um, oh, sorry, single calibration on day one, sorry. On day one. Yeah, just want to make sure. Yeah. Sorry, I got that you wrong. know, I think, uh, you know, Med Medtronic, they do get credit. For sure. For the first hybrid closed loop system. Remember, we were at our face to face live in San Diego, it was just approved. And, um, you know, they, they are working hard to improve their system as well. And I think a major advantage that Medtronic has is they make the sensor and the pump, you know, so they can make these things kind of together and actually create a system versus some of these other companies that are dealing with, well, what happens when the G7 comes out and, you know, we're, we're having to, like, make sure we're still compatible. So, um, but, hey, more competition in this space is, yep. is, is the name of the game. So this is the eyelet, and this is, um, you know, not approved yet. We're hoping in the next, you know, several years. So this is something we've been hearing about forever, and this is actually a fully closed-loop system where, um, it will automate insulin delivery completely. You enter your weight when you start it, and then you can tell it that you're gonna eat, but you don't have to. Um, but the cool thing is if you do tell it that you're gonna eat, it's very qualitative, meaning I'm just eating my typical amount of carbs, slightly more than usual, slightly less than usual, which everybody can kind of get their head around. And then it just uses that time of day and kind of your, your previous you know, typical meals to give you a bolus. Um, so it's very user friendly. Um, is this fair to say? Uh, you know, Jeremy was the main investigator at our UCSD site that you take people on these hybrid closed loop systems that really get the system down, they're doing extremely well. They may not improve their control in this device, but the people that really improved were the ones that come in, they're on multiple daily injections, using a, a, a CGM separately, or maybe not paying that much attention to their diabetes. They seem to do b the best. That's absolutely right. And I thought going into the study, it was going to be the other way around. The people familiar with pumps and all this stuff would, would, would take this and just, you know, kind of run with it. And then the, the people on shots may be less comfortable, but it was actually the exact opposite. So the people that are on multiple daily injections, they'd come in, you know, their A1C was whatever, eight and a half, nine. This was really, really helpful to them. Yeah. And and one, one of my patients, sorry to interrupt, yeah. one of my patients who was on MDI and actually used a, a smart pen and uh, he, he was a volunteer. He loved it. Yeah. It just made his life so simple. No insulin to carb ratios, no you know, insulin sensitivity factors, just put in his weight and that was it. And that's just a good example of where this space is going. You know, it's continuing to evolve, trying to get this like, the whole goal of all of this is to have better blood sugars, good control, live a long healthy life and, and do as little as possible with diabetes and think about it as little as possible. So that's what we want. Nobody wants to enter carbs and do all this crap. Quit changing the slide so fast. I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you about the dual hormonal oh. chamber. Okay. Let me go back. <laughs> I, I think we're doing good with time. We're okay. almost done. Well, you pointed at your phone. Like we, I thought that. I was looking at my blood sugar. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so what did you want to ask me? I wanted to ask you, uh, t say something about the, the insulin only and yeah. the insulin glucagon. So if you look at this 
slide down at the bottom, you can actually see two little black knobs. So this pump was always initially designed to have both hormones, insulin to bring your blood sugar down, glucagon to bring your blood sugar up. The initial studies that they did because of, you know, maybe issues with the FDA, I'm not completely sure what happened, they did with insulin only. And so these initial studies, and I'm quoting these results here, were just, was just insulin. And now moving forward, they're going to add glucagon to see kind of how much benefit you get out of adding the other hormone. Because obviously there's complexity and there's cost of adding glucagon, so we have to determine, you know, is it worth it in terms of adding the glucagon? Certainly in terms of limiting hypoglycemia. So we'll see. It might be the case where there's both options that become commercially available. Um, but I, I will say that, you know, we've been hearing about this device for at least 10 years. Yeah. Maybe 15. And well, I don't know about that long. We'll say 10. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and, um, you know, when we first heard about this, it was just mind-blowing. Who did we hear about it from? Ed Damiano, our good we, friend. Ed, <laughs> you've done an amazing job taking it to this point. Yeah. So, you know, just mind-blowing. How could you have a device that controls blood sugars on its own? And now here we are with it like almost being approved. And it's, I'm actually happy to say, it sounds odd, that it's less mind-blowing because we have so many other good options. I think that's a good thing, um, that this is going to be a fantastic option. It's going to have some benefits um, that the other systems don't have, but the other systems are definitely still in play. So like I was saying with Medtronic, just more competition, more options, and the space is continuing to evolve. And this is the simplicity factor of this yeah. is amazing. And the number of people on this planet that could do so much better by putting this on, putting your weight in. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I'd say, you know, when you, you mentioned hypoglycemia and glucagon preventing it, I would say the main times that I get low is when I override the, the suggestion from my hybrid closed loop that says no bolus suggested. I say, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna beat Pettis on my time and range challenge. And sure enough, you know, it happened, this, it happened this morning. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was TCOID Live Day, we gotta go live, no yeah. matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Ed, uh, awesome job. Congrats. All right, do you wanna talk about this? Yeah, you know what, I, I thought we'd say a few words about, uh, remember that, that device called blood glucose monitoring? Um, you know, it was a major advance going from urine testing in the early 80s. I remember, I, I used to pee on a stick all the time. And- um, not, it, like, not like a urine? Stick, just like a stick outside. Like, yeah, when I was hiking, pee on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a glucose stick, and, but also a ketone stick, too. Um, and and they've, these, these uh, meters have come a long way, and I should just say that the vast majority on this planet do not have access to a CGM, including folks with type 1. So what's the next best thing? Get a glucose meter that has all the advanced features. So, you know, this is the reveal, which is really an impressive meter. You can see it. There's different models. You can see pictures on the lower left. I'm not going to get into all the details, but it, it's made by LifeScan, and uh, the numbers go to a tablet. They go to a computer. They go, they analyze the data in a way where you can look, pick up trends uh, that can help you improve your diabetes control. You can send the information to your doctor, and it, it also hooks up with other smart devices as well. So it's, it's a major advance. And they also try to make it simpler using color coding. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and if you test, you know, if you test one day a month, it's probably, the advanced features aren't gonna help you. But if you test two, three, four times a day, uh, even, even every other day, it can help you pick up, uh, you know, trends. Mm -hmm. um, and the next picture is the, is the Essencia meter, the contour, and they have a whole family uh, of meters and even that one that goes into your USB port you can download the data but they all do the same they all do similar things they have great software they can send that data to smartphones tablets computers and it just helps you and you primarily and then your doctor trying to figure out what's going on and some people that's all they got and it, it's it, we might as well get advancements in BGM devices and I would say both of these uh, BGMs are extremely accurate, mm -hmm. and we and for folks that still have to calibrate their CGM, um, you want to calibrate with an accurate device because if if your meter is not accurate, then it expands the error that your CGM might might get. I've been hearing a lot of buzz that these devices are almost guaranteed to give you a blood sugar of 93. Yeah, well, look. Oh, there it is. 
<laughs> Every single number. Now, on, now, if you go back to the reveal, I think it was like 104. So these meters almost guarantee you a normal blood sugar. Don't laugh. Well, that's your pet peeve that you wish yeah. that some of these meters would, like the ads would show you. I wish. 297. You know how long I've been asking for that? I can tell. He's been coming to my lectures for a long time. You know, you know, show a blood sugar of 275 and then Nobody a, would want that blood a sugar. little text comes up and says, shit. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Eric, did you get that? Bleep it. <laughs> All right. So that's that's it. We're going to do some live Q&A right now. And you actually, uh, Steve actually put Schaefer Bader, his name on it also. Yeah, so because I, I he helped put the slides together. He right. actually did this talk with me. We have it on our website um, under, I think, the new releases in the video vault. Um, that was centered around type 1 diabetes, but it's still a lot of the same thing. And he put this together with me. Um, he deserves credit. He deserves credit. Yeah, and it was the conference we just did, The Future of Diabetes is Now. And check out our... Spotify uh, original song on the future of diabetes now. Very cool song. Um, yeah, so we are here and ready to answer any of your questions. All right, so we have not seen any of these, so we're just going to take them off the cup and see how it goes. Let's, we love questions just winging it. So um, are there programs to help with the price of CGMs? There are definitely uh, uh, programs. Now, you know, Everything from patient assistant programs to free trials to, um, you know, I think there are uh, organizations that can help people that are financially strapped mm -hmm. and we'll get some of these supplies. Brittany says in here she's going to put some links in the chat too. Okay. Yeah, you know, to help. But in general, you know, if you have type 1 diabetes, it's getting covered on most plans, including, yeah. you know, Medicare, even like Medi Cal, you can get it, you know. You, so. you may have to fight for it because mm -hmm. some insurance companies really have a. Okay, I, I'm not going to say any more profane language. Some insurance companies just don't get it. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Jeremy. If you have type 1, uh, you should not be denied, and you may have to push and, and do a prior authorization. And we are putting together a resource site on our website that's coming up soon to address this issue. And I think we hear, we hear, we feel your pain. You know, you and I could not imagine not having access to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I really feel badly when folks could do better on it, but they don't have access right. to it. And same goes for type 2s. If you're on mealtime insulins, covered by Medicare, you know, most insurances. So, you know, I, I feel like this is a right of people yeah, with diabetes yeah. to be able to get this. So, And just both, both Abbott uh, uh, and Dexcom do have uh, programs that offer at least a free one where you can try it, and then sometimes you can use that information that you did really well on it for your caregiver to do it, or your doctor to do a prior author, the insurance company to approve it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. that helps. Is the G7 available now? So not in the US. I believe it is in Europe, if you're watching this in, in Europe. Um, it definitely is. And we're going <laughs> to, you know, I'll Google this while you answer the next question. Hey, Eric, can you Google that? Because <laughs> I, I, I really don't want to give him false. He's too busy bleeping your profanity to do anything else. <laughs> Um, are Shoot. They, are they coming out with non-arm sites for uh, Freestyle Libre? Well, that's a great question. You don't have to use your arm. Yeah. You could use any part of your body, please don't show us, uh, that you like. Because uh, you, have to, you have to remember, when you work through the FDA, once again, they, they do a good job protecting the public. Um, a company has to do studies in one area. Then it gets approved. And that takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes money to do these studies. And so if they wanted to, to approve all the different sites, they'd have to do all these separate studies. If you have subcutaneous tissue on your thigh, your back, your, well, your arm, obviously, and you saw the Omnipod on my neck, that's not a sensor, but anytime, any place you have subcutaneous tissue, you can put it there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, depending where you put it, it might be funny where you have to swipe a lot if you're using the older one, but you could put it on your stomach. You know, and the bottom line is it works any place. Yeah. And so thank you for bringing that up. That's true with the Dexcom It's well. true with the Dexcom. I was, was going to say the Dexcom one was first approved was just on your abdomen. I've always wondered on my leg or, you know, hip or arm, you know, for the longest time, like, that wasn't, wasn't approved. You'd be embarrassed to show it at the beach. You're a diabetic and you're proud of it. I'm not embarrassed. It's just on my leg. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> well, so it's covered up by your bathing suit. Yeah, but that's not like the reason. I just like it on my leg. Right, Get just, off my case. Just, I want you to lay down on the couch. Bush we'll do therapy now. Push your low. You're being mean. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. The G7 is available in Europe. Yes. What country? <laughs> Europe. It's a country. 
Um, wow. Hopefully in the UK. Yeah. Okay. I I stand. I'm glad I'm. We do real time fact checking here. Yeah, at the UK. It's in the UK. Okay. Okay. Say so do your British accent. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is a new prescription needed for G7 or the Freestyle Libre 3? Yes. These are new systems. Like we mentioned pre previously, you need like, <coughs> a prescription for the transmitter for Dexcom. Now it's all one, so absolutely you'll need a new prescription. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Any updates on the phone app for Omnipod 5? Well, it just came out, man. Give them a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as far as I know, I have not heard a word on updates. Oh, you mean on getting to the to the Apple phone, if that's what you meant, um, they're working on it. Yeah. But updates to their current software, um, you know, just came out, so I don't think they even need any updates, to be honest. Um, so, can the G7 connect to your smart watch, watch via Bluetooth? Um, yes. So, you know, just like it goes to your watch right now, like that's actually a really nice feature. It being, I look at my my watch for my blood sugars like all the time. Um, where can I find clinical trials for devices? Where can I find clinical trials for devices? So that's uh, a good clinical question. Trialsfordevices.com. No. Um, well, you know, there's a thing called Google. For no, God's so, sake. so the best, like something you can do, um, <laughs> especially if you have type one, you can just Google like JDRF clinical trials and they have a clinical trial finder They'll, they'll like you know says like match for a clinical trial in 60 seconds and this is for all type one trials. Oh, not I just see. They're the asking devices. about being a participant. Yes. Oh, I thought you meant like just read about them. Oh no. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to be in a clinical trial for type one, you can Google that. It'll say match to a trial in about 60 seconds. It'll ask you some demographic information like how far are you willing to travel, what's your A1C, how long you were diagnosed, and then you'll get a list of trials in your, your area that you know, maybe devices may not. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, if you live in San Diego, you know, a, a, or a city where there's a university, it's, you can always call up the diabetes department or the endocrinology, mm -hmm. ask if there's any clinical trials. And even I would say the, the larger private practices see a lot of people with diabetes, they're usually involved in clinical trials as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can, you can definitely find some, and it's a, it's a great idea. Yeah. And, and if you do, just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into, because a lot of these trials, you know, sometimes people have to wear like eight sensors and they're comparing them. Um, by all means, like, you know, donate your time, um, but you want to make sure, or you just ask what benefit are you getting out of it? Are you going to be able to see the blood sugars in this new device, all that well, kind that, of stuff? Well, I think that's the best question. Yeah. You know, sometimes they blind everybody yeah. from the results. So yeah, you, that's it. Read the, what's it called? The, the patient uh, bill the of rights. Form, the yeah. consent form. The consent form, yeah. Sometimes they get pretty technical, but it's worthwhile reading it through and seeing, you know, you want to help advance the world of science, but at the same time, you don't, you don't want to put yourself at a disadvantage. Um, so last question, do you need your phone to be in range uh, for a loop system to work? Yes. So yes and no. So like if Steve threw his, uh, his phone in the ocean. No frickin' way. <laughs> it would default to, again, the basal setting in That's your true. pump. That's true. So it's not like all of a sudden you stop getting insulin. It'll give you just the, you know, the basal insulin. It's not gonna have any smart features. So for it to start automating insulin delivery, yes, you have to be close yeah, to Yeah, you won't be able to bolus. Yeah. It won't modulate up and down. So you, know, you won't go into ketoacidosis. But yes, you do need to have your phone. I don't know how close it is, but I rarely have I gotten the little alert that says you're out of range, but yeah, it's gotta be near you. So I think we just wanted to close by mentioning again, our one virtual conference coming up on September 10th. Go to our website, tcoid.org, um, sign up today. Again, it's completely free. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're filming a, we've already filmed actually, a new uh, completely original song, it's kind of Beatles themed. Uh, which is Eric's favorite band, so he's putting his back into this one for sure. Um, we're going to do a new food challenge, uh, surprise well, food challenge. Tell them how that's going to work. Yeah, so we've done these food challenges before. How to eat three donuts and stay in range, which I won. How to eat three <laughs> pieces of pizza and stay in range, which I won. And the alcohol challenge and exercise challenge, which... You don't remember who won. Yeah, we don't won. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this one is going to be a surprise food challenge where I'm gonna pick a meal for Steve and he's gonna pick one for me and then we're kinda gonna reveal them and we're gonna have to you know, figure out how to bowl us and try to stay in range. Whoever, the, you have to stay in range 70 to 180 and whoever goes out of range first loses. Um, we're gonna follow it out to three hours usually and if I guess after three hours we're both 
doing good, then we it's a tie. We haven't yeah, had a tie yeah. yet. And we're, we're um, good. We're, you know who's flying out to San Diego right now is Dr. Leslie Island, mm -hmm. endocrinologist from Omaha. She's got type one, awesome individual, great speaker, and she's going to be in several of our uh, videos that are going to be on September mm -hmm. 10th. And what's the game, millionaire? Oh, who wants to be a millionaire? I'm going to be the host. She's going to be the contestant. We're going to see if she wins a million dollars. We hope not because we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> but we'll, so we'll try to stop her. Um, and then we're going to do some reenactments, which I'm really excited about too, of us telling stories about when type 1 actually worked to our advantage or, or something that we've gotten positive out of, of type 1 diabetes and then actually recreate these scenes in our, our lives, which are going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. So join and, and thanks for watching this. Hope you learned something. It's so important to keep up to date with these things. As you can see, even Steve isn't, you know, doesn't know all the details about devices. The G7 is available <laughs> in Europe right now. Yeah. Give us the, one more time with the British accent. <laughs> oh, no. All right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.